Welcome to Sir Majesty's World Science Channel. Today we'll be handling this 2023 Chemistry Practical Alternative B. As you can see here, this is Alternative B. So we can take some name as a Sir Majesty. Other names, Easy World, of course. Then, center number is uh, YouTube. Then, candidate's number can be plus two three four seven zero six five one six six two one seven. Please don't forget to subscribe. So we will handle these questions. We will go to the first question, which should probably be here on titration, as you can see. They told us that E is a solution containing 2.92 gram of HCl and F. They give us this. Uh, is it obtained by diluting 20 cm cube? These are facts. Then put E into the burette and then okay. So they will now they ask us to make a table, tabulate your results, and calculate the average volume of acid used. The in, in the teacher's instruction from what they gave to teachers, the the end point should be anything from 23 to 26, but perfect one is 25 cm cube that is only when 25 cm cube of b is used the volume of uh, e used because e here is an acid should also be 25 okay from the instruction is a uh, hcl and then the acid was hcl and then the base was sodium hydroxide but we work according to what you see in the question paper so for me to make this table i'll need a ruler as usual so here we go it's my ruler for the table according to the question to determine the average volume of acid used average volume of acid used is equal to you tell the examiner the one you are using first plus second plus third they are all concordant because they did not vary with more than 0 0.2 don't use tighter values that vary with more than 0 0.2 what I mean here is that uh, if, for instance, that this uh, over here is this 25, this particular 25 now, if it happens to be 25 point, instead of 25.10, if it happens to be 25.30, it is no more concordant because it's now varying with more than 0 0.2 between the values. So, but checking 25.10, 25.00, 24 they are within 0 0.2 in the range of 0 0.2. So this is actually still concordant with the value, this 25 is concordant with uh, the other one. So we can now go ahead and then calculate by filling in the gap with the right figure which are 24.90 plus 25.10 plus 25.00 all divided by 3 at the end this will sum up to, to 75 of course 75 all over 3 which gives us that our VA, but here you can use it as VE, where E stands for 
the letter uh, letter there we can still say VA for acid is equal to 25.00 cm cube we have gotten the answer to this okay then don't cancel your table and then give the examiner a neat work so the strengths of these were changed in this question but follow what they gave you in this question paper and know what your teacher told you whatever you see in the question paper that's what you are going to use so we are going to continue with uh, other questions that follows let's check if uh, these ones are the question that follows probably not okay this is the space for your table then question B says from your information that's from your results and information provided we have to calculate the concentration of E in mole per dm cube and the E there was an information about E E was we were told that E contains 2.92 I'm correct. Maybe we we'll go back and still confirm what E was given to us as 2.92 gram per cm cube of of course so we now go back. So E is automatically 2.92 gram per dm cube HCl given already. So now, mole per dm cube, we use the formula which says that mole per dm cube is equal to, <coughs> that's uh, from the formula we will have, mole per dm cube is equal to gram per dm cube all over gram per mole, speaking in terms of, yes of course, all over gram per mole. And then gram per dm cube has been given as 2.92 and then molar mass of HCl is 1 plus 35.5 which will give you 36.5 gram per mole as the molar mass. Therefore the next thing is to substitute the value such that mole per dm cube is equal to 2.92 which was already given all over 36.5 so let's go normally from the instruction paper the rc should be 0 0.08 mole but let's see what they, this one will give us 2.92 divided by 2.92 divide by the molar mass of HCl which is 0 0.08 that's uh, correct this is what they actually provided okay so 0 0.08 mole per dm cube is our answer then we go to the next question probably here, yeah. continuation of uh, this. They say concentration of YOH2 in F in mole per dm cube. Thus, the concentration of YOH2 in F, which is in the base in mole per dm cube, since the base was hidden, we cannot use uh, the same formula I used previously using gram per dm cube all over gram per mole means mole per dm cube this cannot be used here reason is because of the fact that the base is hidden that's this particular yo this compound here the y is unknown therefore you can't use that you don't know the molar mass so if this doesn't work in concentration it means that the next thing you use should be the CAVA all over CBVB is equal to so here we're gonna be 
using what using C A V A all over C B V B equals N A over N B or you can equally say C E V E all over C F V F is equal to N E all over N F so anyone you want to use is still accepted provided you have to fix your values very well C E thanks for this uh, concentration of the E which is the acid which is the same thing as uh, C A 0 0.08 times the volume that's the V E is the average volume of E used which over here I use 25 all over the cf is the concentration of that base we are looking for so we will have to use cf times vf is the volume of pipette we used which is t25 equal to na over nb we have to go back to the equation they gave us and check what na is the question what is na more ratio of us uh, of uh, the acid as the more ratio of the y h okay that is the hcl so over here according to the equation the acid is n a is two while the base is one though normally it's supposed to be one is to one but here we have one is to two so we go back and then this is where we are in our calculations so here we have that Ne is 2 over 1 according to them because the F was 1. Therefore, you can make Cf the subject of the formula. You have that Cf is now equal to after everything will be 0 0.08 times 25 times 1 all over 50 25 times 2 and this gives us 0 0.08 times 25 divided by 50 should be what times 25 is 2 then divide by 50 should be 0 0.04 0 0.04 okay zero point zero four so in this case we have zero point zero four mole per dm cube as our final answer then the next one says the solubility of the substance YO2 in mole per dm cube solubility we will still have to go back to the question and then this the question told us that uh, F is a solution obtained by diluting 20.0 cm cube of saturated solution of this, this so we are taking a look at 20.0 cm cube of the saturated solution of Y was able to give us uh, 0 0.04 therefore how much will be in, uh, in the 1000 of it so because that's what should be done there 20.0 cm cube of saturated solution of Y was uh, added up to 1 dm cube and it gave us 0 0.04 is 0 0.4 therefore you ask yourself what 1000 will now contain what okay so here we will now say, according to the equation, the solubility of the substance Y in mole per dm cube should now be 20.0 was able to contain 0 0.04. Whatever 1000 contains at that temperature is the solubility contains X. So you cross multiply such that 20x is equal to 1000 times 0 0.04 and this will automatically give us 
1000 times 0 0.04 should give us 40 such that 20x is equal to 40 such that x alone is going to be 40 divided by 20 which is automatically 2 moles per dm cube so it's going to give us 2 moles per dm cube as our final answer okay as to still clear that 0 0.04 times 1000 let me check if it is actually 40 but that's what it's going to be times 1000 is 40 of course so we now go to the next question which says mass of YO2 that's mass of Y hydroxide that will be deposited if one DMQ of saturated solution is evaporated to dryness is evaporated to dryness okay so you use what you got in III uh, which automatically implies that uh, okay yeah I think is in order the mass that will be deposited if one DMQ or saturated solution is evaporated to dryness so and one DMQ or the saturated solution contain two points 2.0 mole per dm cube so you just convert this mole per dm cube to molar mass you convert this this particular thing we got just to mass because this is the amount in one dm cube of course so, so uh, when you evaporate it to dryness you get a mass equivalent to two mole per dm cube and then converting mole to mass require you times in the mole by the molar mass okay so we will have to continue you just say using a formula you just solve to get the maximum mark remember theory questions are not objective because your solving steps is what gives you mark so that's why i'm trying to bring out the best formula to okay so the molarity of saturated solution of Y OH is what? Molarity of saturated solution of uh, F, that's Y OH2, is 2.0 mole per dm cube. And that means. 1 dm cube will contain 2.0 so evaporating the 1 dm cube will still give you 2.0 so y o h2 we deposit 2 moles therefore Converting mole to mass, you use N equal to mass over molar mass. And the mass is what we are looking for here. Our N is automatically 2. Then, the molar mass of Y bracket OH2 was given already as 74.0. Just refer to this. See it over here. It was given to us. So that's where we got that uh, information from. Already given. Therefore, we can now say that. The mass deposited is equal to cross multiply the mass deposited is equal to two times seventy four, which will give you one forty eight probably. So seventy four times two. And four times two is one forty eight. So over here we have one forty eight grams of Y, 
will be deposited. That's our final answer. Okay, we move on. the easy learning and teaching of chemistry in schools, in universities, secondary schools, in research institutes. So this majestic periodic table, on demand, demand and special demand, as you can see that space there highlighted, that is where you can include the name of your school or if you are dedicating it to anybody, you can write there because you, you can print it to any size you like in a majestic size the resolution will never be affected so it took me about three months to design and provide these informations but thank god the table is here what made me to design this is that i discovered that these tables i see in the internet the one i see in the market they are not as informative as i want and then some of them are not updated some still retain the fact that we have there are like some still see uh, promentum has not been radiated so I see them as an uh, artificial element but it is still is a is a naturally occurring element of course so there are some modifications that this table has has been made to include and that makes it majestic so uh, this should be salt analysis I think we are done with the titration question we go to salt analysis the salt we are analyzing here is actually ammonium trisocarbonate 4, but you are not required to tell the examiner. Your job is to follow the instructions. So first of all, we have to make our table, which is going to be having three columns, the test, observation, and inference. Yeah. These are the standard way to report your salt analysis then the serial number to each of the experiments you're doing is also necessary so we might probably have four columns here hmm. the tests the column for observation should be largest An inference okay the label we have serial number here is test you can use capital letter or small letter observation Then here is your inference. Okay. Officially, this has to extend again. So number exactly according to the question. They say dissolve all G. That's question A. Dissolve all G. So here you know be our question A. In 10 cm cube. So there will be G plus 10 cm cube of distilled water. can use H2O there in a boiling tube then when you dissolve that you have to report 
or because they numbered it since it's numbered there will be observation for that just say g dissolves to form a clear solution this means that g is soluble in water then you rule before you go to the next okay then B says to test the solution with litmus so B I says solution from A solution of G plus litmus paper practically is going to turn the ammonium trazo carbonyl turns red litmus paper blue so it's a solution turned red litmus paper blue that means solution G is a C uh, alkaline sorry solution G is basic solution G is basic or alkaline here I will explain further chemistry solution G is supposed to be neutral to litmus paper so if you report without doing the practical you will say neutral and you probably fail if the examiner really want to work you no know, sometimes this is Africa <laughs> might be shocking that you that failed it will get it but anybody that reports no action on litmus paper is not practical the person is theoretical so based on salt hydrolysis ammonium carbonate is a salt of weak acid and weak base the weak acid is ammonium uh, the weak acid is actually h2co3 that's carbonic acid while the weak base is ammonium hydroxide so they sup the salt supposed not to hydrolyze in water to give either alkaline or acidic solution it's supposed to produce a solution that is neutral with ph of seven but practically this is not true the main reason is because ammonium carbonate decomposes to liberate ammonia even when not heated is one of the ammonium salts that liberates uh, ammonia even without heating with a base or alkalis either so the reason for this is because the liberated ammonia is what is responsible for the action on the litmus paper so the practical report should be solution turned red litmus paper blue and solution g is basic don't report theoretical because what you are doing is practical okay can ask for that question or equally bring your arguments <laughs> against what i'm saying here in the comment box but it will be good if you are polite if you are not no problem it can only attract me not responding to your comment then the bii to about two cm cube portion of the solution in test tube add sodium hydroxide then warm the resulting mixture gently so you now say they said to about two cm cube so you got to say solution solution g or first portion of g plus naoh aqueous plus warm if they say heat you say heat if they say warm you say warm simple to stand the surface side okay and then warm gently so your report here should be colorless gas with a choking smell evolved
colorless gas with a checking smell evolved so the examiner will not tell you how to confirm the gas you can make other statements for that which confirms what the gas is gas turned moist red litmus blue or you can say gas formed white dense film with glass rod dipped in HCl gas formed white dense fumes with uh, HCl so you come to the inference and say ammonia gas because it's the only alkaline gas for now from your O level from ammonium ion so you can say ammonia gas ammonium ion present so this is it for this page you now go further to complete Yeah, this is where we will complete our reports. So over here should be, I guess, B. I think B, I, I. Say 2 cm cube of solution G plus dilute HNO3. Definitely what we have to, there will be effervescent here with if the HNO3 is replaced with any other acid, our observation, remember this is state test column, the column for observation. is still here. Inference effervescence occur colorless odorless gas evolved which turns lime water milky gas turned lime water milky so your inference is CO2 gas from CO3 to minus or probably HCO3 minus yeah Because the hydrogen triazo carbonate 4 will do the same, just like triazo carbonate 4 will give up a vessel on an addition with a acid, whether in solution or in solid form. Then the next one, if I can remember, should be this is III, so that here might be IV. I'll let her check the numbering. Over here, you still write 2cm cube of solution G plus dilute uh, aqueous barium chloride indicate the state of matter of the reagents plus excess HNO3 normally we use BCL and HCL that's barium chloride and excess HCL or barium nitrate and excess HNO3 but they used barium chloride here and the excess HNO3 is the same mechanism because they want you to test if the barium salt formed 
when it reacts with the unknown sample will be soluble in acid and HCl is acid, HNO2 is acid, even H2SO4 can also be used. So if this happens, as far as we are analyzing barium, uh, we are analyzing ammonium triazocarbonate for our observation will be uh, there will be white powdery precipitate, white chalky or powdery precipitate formed, white powdery precipitate formed with what? Barium chloride. Then precipitate dissolves. Dissolves with effervescence in excess what? Effervescence. It's effervescent in excess HNO3. So uh, if it gives a white chalky precipitate on adding barium. You now, since anything that will give you that white chalky precipitate on addition of barium chloride tells you to suspect the trioxosulfate 6 ion, trioxosulfate 4 ion, or trioxocarbonate 4 ion present. But due to the fact that this dissolves, if you want to be more specific, uh, you can remove SO42 minus and just write there because it's soluble. You can say SO3 that's trioxo sulfate 4 or trioxo carbonate 4 present. But if you report gas evolved, turned line water milk here, if you are if your observation. If you continue here and say gas turned line water milk in under your observation, that means you have to write CO3 or HCO3 confirmed. No more SO3 2 minus can no longer be there. So these are the guide that you should use to answer these questions. I think you are done with the questions and salt analysis. So, then over here is question number three. Determine the volume of water that should be added to 100 cm cube of 0 0.5 mole PDM cube HCl in order to obtain 0 0.3 mole PDM cube HCl. We're going to use dilution law here as the formula to be applied. So, and dilution law, so using dilution equation or law, you have that C1V1 is equal to C2V2. What is our C1? The first concentration mentioned is your C1, and that should be the first molarity mentioned is 0 0.5 over here. Then the V1 is also the first volume mentioned, which is 100 cm cube. Our C2 is the second concentration mentioned, which is 0 0.3. Then our V2 is the unknown, but they said that would be added to 100. So after everything, you now know the extra volume that will be added. But this is the formula to be applied. So we go by substituting these values. Our first concentration is 0 0.5, of course, times the first volume 100 is equal to 0 0.3 times V2, such that V2 is equal to 
0 0.5 times 100 which is automatically 50 divided by 0 0.3 so we have that 50 divided by 0 0.3 is equal to what 50 divided by 0 0.3 is 166.67 on the approximate 166.67 166.67 cm cube but the question says determine the volume of water that will be added to 100 cm cube so the total volume should be 166.67 but we already have 100 so the extra volume that will be added should be 166.67 minus 100 cm cube which will give you automatically 66.67 cm cube so if you go and measure 100 cm cube of the stock solution and add 66.67 cm cube of water to it you have diluted it from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 more per dm cube and that is our final answer okay so now the next says uh, describe briefly a chemical test to distinguish between dilute HCl and dilute HNO3. A chemical test, they say support the test with relevant equation. We might have two possible ways here. I'll teach you the two possible ones, or less during the discussion I discovered that some of them is not scientific. First, you can use by using aqueous silver nitrate. Yes, as AgNO3 can do the, can distinguish that. So when AgNO3 reacts with what? AgNO3, because the equation is, can speak for you here, reacts with uh, HCl, there will be double decomposition, an insoluble salt is formed, which is AgCl, Remember they say dilute, that means this is aqueous, this is also aqueous, state of matter is necessary. Silver chloride is insoluble, there will be white precipitate. Then the silver chloride is formed then with HNO3, which is also aqueous. Balance the equation is balanced on its own. So, but if you have HNO3 plus HNO3, there will be no visible reaction. Do you understand that? So, HNO3 plus HNO3 is equal to no visible reaction. Then, the grammar part of it is that dilute HCl, you tell the examiner, dilute HCl, aqueous, we form a white precipitate with silver silver nitrate solution silver nitrate solution That's aqueous silver nitrate while dilute HNO3 will show no visible reaction. Just show no reaction. Then another way you can use is reacting the two acids with metals above hydrogen in the activity series you can react the two with uh, aluminium is actually passive in hno3 but not in hcl so aluminium metal will react with dilute hcl but will not react with dilute hno3 so you can also say using aluminium metal can distinguish them aluminium is passive in HNO3 and that's why it can be stored in aluminium container 
because the HNO3 will form a protective layer of aluminium oxide due to its powerful oxidizing ability with aluminium, which prevents the further attack on the aluminium metal. Okay, so using aluminium metal, now tell the examiner HCl will react with aluminium to liberate hydrogen gas, dilute HCl will react with aluminium metal to liberate hydrogen gas, while HNO3, dilute HNO3 will not react with aluminium at all. So there will always be equation in each case. So tell the examiner aluminium metal reacts with dilute HCl to liberate. Remember you are going to answer only one. That's why the space is enough. But I'm uh, giving you two possible things you can write. That's why I filled up the space to liberate hydrogen gas. But dilute HNO3 will show no visible reaction because it's passive in it. The equation is just Al plus HCl will give you aluminum chloride respect to reticle plus hydrogen gas. To balance the equation, there should be, you cannot put just three here, there should be two here, two here. And then six here and three here. Yeah, this is the gas. Then this is a uh, aqueous. This is aqueous. This is solid. Then what you will not write here is uh, if the if the if the if there is reddish brown gas released. It says HNO3. That's wrong because they say dilute HNO3. Be careful here. Dilute HNO3 do not release reddish brown gas with metals. Please. It releases, if at all, it releases a colorless gas, which is nitrogen 2 oxide with copper metal and not every metal. So don't mention reddish brown gas here since the two acids are dilute. So we have come to the end of this solution to the alternative B uh, question. For this work, we might uh, replay them again. We started here. Thank you for watching. Wait a minute. Have you heard about Sa Majesty Easy Word? Guys, Sa Majesty took away my fear I had in chemistry and biology. You have to join the Easy hey, Word. My name is Vitrio Modia, a student in Italy. You, anywhere you are, you can join us, join the Easy World, be a subscriber. Bye, thank me later. Whenever you reach for me, for me.